Hello all my lovies, welcome back to my channel. So I am recording this on my phone as I drive because I am in quite a bit of traffic right now. I'm trying to get home from dropping my son off, so this is fun. Um, and I don't know when I'm going to have time to film what I want to film either tonight or tomorrow because I have homework when I get home. I also have to take care of tomorrow. That's really important. I just spit on myself. That was cute. Okay. Why is my window fogging up? I don't understand right now. What is happening? So I want to introduce a new series to my channel and that series is mainly discussing um, the topic of anxiety, depression, and mental disorders. Um, for those of you who don't really know me or know this, some people know me but don't know this, um, I do suffer from anxiety, a lot of social anxiety. I do battle depression and I am bipolar. I have been diagnosed bipolar type 2 since I was about 15, I want to say, for about 8 9 years. I want to say. And then I've also had anxiety for the last eight or nine years as well. Um, I've gone to counseling, I've gone to therapy, I've gone to psychiatrist, um, psychologist, psychologist. Um, I take medicine every day for my, of my life for the past many years. Um, so, you know, I want to start kind of talking about that more. I know I'm not like this big YouTuber and I'm not, I don't have a big social following and I don't care about that. Um, I'm just hoping that these discussions and these kind of sit down, sit down, chit chat, get ready with me, not really get ready with me because I'm in the car right now, but I will be incorporating like me doing makeup when I talk about this. Um, I want to hope that maybe this can at least get out to somebody and maybe help someone. If I can just help one person who is battling and dealing with depression, anxiety, bipolar, um, uh, in a manic state, uh, any type of mental disorder, you know, if I can help one person, that would make me extremely happy. I have a special place in my heart for people that deal with that stuff. And I'm not saying that if you don't deal with it, you know, you aren't special to me if I know you. I'm just saying like, if you do deal with stuff like this and you do battle with stuff like this, I have a special place in my heart for you because I know how hard it is. Um, I lately the last, I want to say two and a half months, maybe three months. Okay. Let's just put it big perspective. This last nine months have been some of the hardest nine months of my entire freaking life. I became a single mom, I went in debt, I'm broke. Uh, I'm in bad debt, I've been very impulsive, I've had some of the worst anxiety that I've had in a really long time. I'm raising a toddler on my own, I'm trying to figure my life out. Um, my grandma passed away, uh, family stuff, just a lot of family drama. Um, Losing a lot of friends, you know, pretty major shit for me personally in my life um, that I've been going through in the last at least nine months. But these last two to three months have probably been the worst that they've been in a long time. And I have peaked the worst in my depression and the worst in my anxiety and the worst in the fear of having to do things and leave my house. Um, I've been a hermit lately. I only go to work and that's if I go to work because I've been doing whatever I can to get my shifts covered and not go to work even though I need money because I can't get out of the house um, and I feel like and I have found that if I talk about it it kind of helps me out a little bit more but then also if I talk about it I can't I might be relating to somebody else and so somebody else knows that I, they're not alone because none of us are alone um, you'd be surprised at how many people actually battle with this every single day and we don't know um, like a lot of people that know me, especially like at work and stuff. Is that my old Camaro? A lot of people have been asking me, like, are you okay? Like, you know, you seem kind of off on some days. You seem kind of out of it. Like, I talked to my mom about it the other day, and my mom was kind of just like, I feel like when I'm talking to you and I'm looking at you, I'm looking through you. I'm not looking at you. She's like, you, I, I, you act like, like, she was pretty much explaining that because I've been in such a manic state and I've been so off. She was pretty much telling me, like, you know what, like, I, I, she feels like she's not looking at me or, like, at a real person. She's looking at a picture of me or, like, 
I'm here, but I'm not here. She was looking through me, not at me. And that's how it's felt like. Um, and I want to start this series. I want to have this series. And I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to stop really quick. I'm sorry if I go off topic. I'm sorry if I kind of scramble here and there or if I'm kind of messy in these. Um, I, I want to try to be organized. I want to kind of try to talk about certain topics and try to get everything in order. But at the same time, I don't know how to do that. Because the way I work is I just sit down and talk. Like, if you know me, I once I get in an in-depth conversation, I will go on and on. And I'm very an in-depth person. Uh, I like topics like this. I like talking about things like this. I like talking very in-depth about things. Um, especially getting to know someone. I like in-depth detail. Tell me your fears. Tell me what you love. Tell me, like, what your soul craves. Things like that. That's the type of person I am. Um, and... I recently went to go see my psychiatrist. Um, I actually went to my old psychiatrist that I was going to for a very long period of time before I transitioned insurances. Then my insurance no longer covered me going to her or my medicine, so I had to transfer over to Kaiser. Um, the psychiatrist that I saw at Kaiser, no go. If you don't know about bipolar, um, I will put like a description up on the screen for you guys so you kind of know like the medical definition of it. Pretty much, it, it's a chemical imbalance in your brain. Pretty much things just don't click um which people think it's not normal and yes you're right uh, i am normal in my own way the way my brain works and the brain the way people that have bipolar disorder the way their brain works is not normal than an average person it is normal in our own way um depression anxiety you're normal in your own way you handle things differently you deal with things differently um i feel emotions a hundred times more in depth and more and, and different than maybe you would if you don't have bipolar or if you don't have anxiety. Um, emotions for me are hard because I either feel it a hundred and fifty thousand percent to where I'm like devastated or I don't feel anything at all. Cold hearted truth. Um, there's times where I literally feel like I don't have a heart and I don't have a any spark of emotion. Because there's sometimes with certain people in certain situations, I don't feel anything. I literally just nothing. Like I am just like, eh, whatever, fuck them. Like I don't really care. Like they're lost, not mine. And I'm just like very cold hearted. Like I will say things very mean and I'll say things that'll hurt you. And yes, it may not, may or may not be the truth, but to me I don't care. Because at that point in time I want to, I'm trying to hurt your feelings. And the past couple months. I've been in a manic state where I'm very impulsive, but I'm also very down. So a lot of people that deal with manic states, uh, for example, my cousin, and she gave me full 100% range to talk about her situation, what she's been through because she's also bipolar, she also has depression and anxiety. Um, she was in a manic state for quite a while and she went off the rails. Um, quick little backstory, you know, she was drinking, partying, sleeping around, going from house to house to house, couch surfing, um, hated her whole entire family, like cut every single person in her family out, her mom, her dad, me, like bitched me out, cussed me out, cussed my mom out, went off on her family, like her parents, hated all of us, said that we were all horrible people, whatever, whatever, went off, like off the fucking rocker. And it's because she had a chemical imbalance and they weren't balanced out. And she was in a manic state. She was very, she was hyper, I think it's hypo or hyper. I need to correct myself because I always forget the terms. Now yet again, remember, PSA, I am not a psychiatrist, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist. This is just from my experience, me personally, what I know. Research that I've done and stuff that I have gone through myself personally. Um, she went on, like, she was like on a hypo manic, I think it was a hyper manic, not a hypo, I think it was hyper manic state to where she's just very impulsive around here oh hello um you guys it's the bridge hi bridge um i wish she lived around here because i would totally love to have her on my channel for her to tell her story for you guys because it's different than mine like my story and her story are very different um because we are two different people gone through, went through two different things but that's just an example so for me i've been very impulsive to the fact where it's like I've gone out and gotten three tattoos that, yes, they have meaning, but just like randomly I'll like wake up and be like, I'm going to get a tattoo today and spend money. Um, I impulsively, you know, 
I impulsively buy stuff that I don't need that I'll never use like makeup clothes I'll impulsively go to Target and spend $300 and come home and like two days later look at the stuff that I bought and go back and return it because I'm like why did I buy this if I literally don't need this like I bought outfits that I look I bought like this really cute outfit from Target a couple weeks ago and I brought it home and I tried it on and I was like this is ugly like I would never wear this why did I buy it I bought it because I wanted to because I was impulsive and I didn't care um, I'm impulsively like going MIA on people and I'm sorry if you're one of my friends watching this um, and if I've kind of been distant from you I'm sorry please don't take it personal I tend to do that a lot when I'm depressed um, or if I have really bad anxiety I tend to disappear from people um, I tend to pull myself away from everybody that I love and care about because I don't want to drag them down with me I pulled away from my parents I pulled away the only person I've been taking care of and I have not pulled myself away from is my kid and that's because I'm a mom and it's that's another thing is I'm this this video is going to be so off topic and so like it's gonna, number one it's gonna be a long video number two it's going to be very like I don't know how to like condense everything. I have been very impulsive I've been very depressed I have been really down I have never felt I have never felt this down and this hurt and this sadness inside me I haven't felt that in a really long time and it sucks because I I don't really know why um, I'm not happy number one and for a lot of things the only thing I'm really happy about is I'm happy with my kid but it got to a point where like even my son wasn't making me happy like I, I couldn't be happy with him and I didn't feel like I was being my true self with him and I feel like I couldn't be the mom I know I can be with him and that's when I noticed that like you know what something is off with me something is not right um something's going on you know what I mean like I, ca I caught myself and I was like this isn't normal um I I was like I don't know what's going on I don't know who I am anymore I I didn't want to, you know, every day was a struggle to get out of bed. And I know when people say things like that, it's like, oh, it's not that hard. Just get yourself out of bed. Like, you wake up, you go about your business every single day, and it is what it is, like everybody else. But at the same time, you know, sometimes it's not that easy for people that are in that state. Um, I didn't want to leave my bed ever. I didn't want to shower. I didn't, I didn't want to do my makeup. Like, it was so hard for me to get out of bed and get ready and, and take care of my son and take care of myself. And not only that, go to work. And I work in a restaurant, so I have to be friendly and nice to people. And I have to take care of people. I'm serving people. And then, you know, be sociable around my coworkers and, you know, try to, like, just all of it was just so draining emotionally and mentally. It was so exhausting. I had no desire to do literally anything with literally anybody. Um, and it was really sad and it was really hard for me because I I felt myself slipping down a major, major rabbit hole, as I like to call it. I like to say it to myself that when I am depressed, I am falling down a rabbit hole. Like Alice in Wonderland, that's one of my favorite movies. I love that movie so much. Um, but I like to say it as like, I'm falling down the rabbit hole and I was falling down a major, very deep, dark rabbit hole that I, that I almost wasn't able to get myself out of. Um, and I, you know, I always told myself not to let it get that far and I did. And it was my fault. Um, I didn't talk about it sooner. I didn't talk about it as soon as I could. I should have mentioned and opened it up sooner. I should have went and got help sooner. And, you know, I got kind of suicidal for a second and not saying that, you know, I would ever actually do it to be honest I don't know um, 100% straight forward with you I don't know if I would because when you're in that mind state and you're in that when you have all those thoughts and your mind is racing and I have racing thoughts really bad all the time 24 7 I have racing thoughts um, my mind's going a mile a minute literally constantly about everything and I overanalyze everything and I think a hundred thousand different ways about every situation before I do it it's, it's ridiculous but I got into my head a little bit too much. I started having those thoughts and I, my, my head started racing and going and going and going. And that's when I stopped and I thought about it and I was like, you know what? Either you need to go into a psychiatric hospital like now or you need to make an appointment you need to get your medicine fixed. Like you need to go talk to someone. That's when I, I, I looked down at my son and I, I was 
bawling my eyes out. Felt like I had nobody. I felt like I couldn't talk to anybody. I felt like I literally lost every single person in my life except for my son. I even felt like I was losing my son even though he's two and a half and he has no idea. And I looked at him and I thought about it and I was like, I, I can't do this. Like my, my son needs me more than anybody and I have to be alive and healthy and safe for my kid. And I thought about it, I thought about it, I thought about it, my mind was racing, and I was like, what do I do? Like, do I end it? Probably not. And I, and I just talked to one of my friends, um, this guy who, you know, means a lot to me, and he was like, dude, stop, like, what are you doing? Like, don't do that. And I kind of vented to him a little bit how I felt. Sorry about the red light, uh, I'm still in traffic. Um, and he was like, what are you doing? Like, you need to think about your son. You need can't do that like you need to get help so I ended up getting hold of my psychiatrist my old psychiatrist that I used to go to and I was like hey you know I don't feel right um, I'm, I'm really out of it I'm I feel like I'm a, I'm, I'm a, like a ghost 24-7 I feel like I'm high off drugs 24-7 um, I feel like I am constantly in a phase like a, a phase. I feel like I'm constantly in a haze and a fog I can't see straight I can't focus on anything uh, I couldn't even watch TV. I couldn't watch. I couldn't stay focused and concentrated on literally anything at all. It was bad. And you know, I yeah. I don't. I went to my psychiatrist and talked to her, and she asked me some questions to figure out like what state I'm in. And it turns out that I'm in a manic state, and I don't really remember calling ever be, excuse me, ever being in a manic state like this. Normally I'm just in like a depressed state, I guess you could say. I don't really remember being in a, ever, excuse me, in a manic state, but I was a hundred percent. Um, but I was also in a depression. So it's like I was manic with like the impulse, the racing thoughts, the no care, no heart, whatever, like no freaking soul at all. But then there was times where I was feeling every emotion. I was feeling everything. To top it all off, in the middle of me going through this, my grandmother passed away, uh, unexpectedly. And that woman was my best friend. That woman was a queen. Oh, rest in peace. Um, so that was really hard for me as well. Sorry. Um, still going through it. It's only been about a week and a half. Wednesday will be two weeks. This video is on Sunday. Um, so that's really hard for me. So in the middle of all that, you know, that happened. And it just brought me down 10 feet more down that rabbit hole. And, you know, I, I pulled it together and I, I stayed strong for my kid because I have to because I am a mom and I will be a mom before anything else. But I also realized that I have to be selfish. And for you out there, if you're going through any of this, you and anybody in your life is toxic or negative and they're bringing you down, you need to be selfish. Because at the end of the day, all you have is yourself and you need to take care of you because nobody else will. Yes, we have our parents, we have our significant others, we have, you know, our kids, our grandparents, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins, whoever, your best friend. Um, it doesn't matter. You can have all of that, but when you're in that mind state, you still feel alone. Because at the end of the day, you are. And no one else can fix you. Nobody else can tell you it's going to be okay. They can, but only you can make it happen. So everybody can sit here and tell you, oh, you'll be okay, take this medicine, you'll be okay, oh, go to this person, talk about this, oh, do this, do that. But at the end of the day, if you don't take that advice and you don't do anything about it, you don't project it onto yourself, you're not going to be okay. Because you're the only one that can change your attitude. You're the only one that can try to strive for the better. You're the only one that can beat past your anxiety and, you know, you're the only one that can get yourself out of your funk. You're the only one that can pull yourself up by your fucking shoe straps or your boot straps or whatever the hell you want to call it and get your shit straight and make sure you're happy. You're the only one that can do that. And my fucking gaslight just turned on. Why does this always happen to me? Oh my God, and I'm in traffic. Uh, you're the only one. And I realize that, you know what? I have my parents who love me. I have family that loves me. I have my kid who loves me. I have friends, you know, a very selected few because I don't associate myself with a lot of people anymore. But at the end of the day, what can they do to make me feel better? Can They can't. If I want to feel better and I want to get myself in a better place, I have to do that for myself. 
Because if I don't do that for myself, how can I take care of my kid? How can I be a mom? You can't go about your day-to-day -day life being, being like that and be happy. I don't want to be miserable every day. Do I, do I want to feel like this? Of course I don't. So I did something about it. And that's what I want everybody out there to realize. You can, you can do something about it. Anxiety is very difficult. It's a touchy subject. It's very different for everybody. Anxiety is different for every single person. My mom has, my mom's had anxiety. She has anxiety, not as often anymore, but she used to. But her anxiety wasn't always the same as how I felt. My ex used to have anxiety. His anxiety was way different than how I felt. My cousin has anxiety. We have very similar stuff, but it's also different. Everybody has different forms. Of it. I hate being in large crowds. To tell you, to tell you the truth, it took me about a year and a half to two years to go to a movie theater or go into a Target or a mall by myself, or just go to movies at all. I would go to Target or I'd go to Safeway or I'd go to Lucky's and I would sit in my car in the parking lot for about 20 to 30 minutes talking myself into getting out of my car to go inside and I never would and I would put my car I'd turn my car back on and I'd leave and I'd have to wait till my mom came home or wait till my day off or wait till my at the time my boyfriend come home and they'd have to take me or my cousin when she lived down here she would have to go with me or I'd go to her work and I'd sit at her work for hours and wait for her to get off and I would have her run my errands with me and pretty much hold my hand because I couldn't do anything by myself. And it was miserable. I was absolutely miserable. I acted like I was okay. And I was still going out and living my life, but I could never do it on my own. And I had to literally have like a talk with myself every single time because I literally couldn't get out of my fucking car. Me and my boyfriend at the time, my ex, who is the, fa the father of my son, we would go to the movie theaters and play on a date night. We would stand in line or we'd park. I would freak out and have a full-blown panic attack, hyperventilating, not breathing, and we'd go home. Or we'd get out, we'd park, get out of the car. I'd be clinging onto his arm. We'd stand in line. I'd freak out and I'd say we had to leave. And we'd either drive around, listen to music, or I'd, he'd take me home and I would fall asleep because I was so worked up, I just wanted to sleep because I was so exhausted. To get me into the movies, I was pregnant with my son. It was me, and my my ex, and my mom and dad. And we went to go see Finding Dory. It was the first time I sat into the movie theater in about almost a year and a half, maybe two years. And that whole entire time, I was freaking out. Like my mom and dad kept checking on me. My, my ex kept checking on me. Like, are you okay? Are you okay? Like, I, I like eventually. I don't know, and you know what? I don't know what I was so afraid of. The one that would make plans with people, and because of my anxiety, I would flake on them last minute. I'm not, I'm that friend. I'm that friend that will make plans with people, and it'll come up to that the day of, and then I will make up some excuse to why I can't go, and then they get all pissed off, but in reality, they just didn't realize that my anxiety was so bad I couldn't leave my house, or I couldn't get out of bed, or I couldn't even get myself in the shower to, to take a shower to get dressed to go. I was that friend, I'm that person. Still to this day, I am that person. I've gotten better, but it's also a struggle. And I want everybody out there to know that if that's how you feel and that's how you are, it's okay. It's, it's normal. Don't beat yourself up for feeling like that because it's, it's, it's okay. You know, there's ways to go about it. Um, there's medicine you could take for anxiety. There's you know, therapy sessions help a lot. Talking about it is the number one thing. And if you battle with anxiety and you deal with anxiety or panic attacks, my number one thing for you is, is to tell you is from what I've learned is just take deep breaths. I take deep breaths and I count and then I defocus myself from the situation and I distract myself with something that makes me happy. And I think of my happy place. And I have two happy places that I think of. I know there's like no light in here and I'm sorry, um, but I'm gonna talk anyways. Whatever makes you happy and whatever is, is calming and, and makes your soul happy, think about that when you're in the middle of a panic attack or the middle of anxiety and you feel your chest tight and you start to not be able to breathe. You start to sweat, you start to shake. That feeling, put yourself in a place that makes you happy. Focus on that and focus on your breathing. And if you have someone around with you, tell them just to talk to you. I used to 
you know, when I would have anxiety when I was living with my dad and my ex at the time, like, couldn't calm me down or whatever the case was, my dad would come in the room and my dad would just talk to me, ask me questions. My mom does the same thing to this day. Have someone distract you. The number one thing of pulling yourself out of anxiety and pulling and calming yourself down and pulling yourself out of the anxiety or panic attack is distraction. Like, I know it's difficult because I struggle with it still to this day, but you have to distract yourself because that's the only way you're gonna calm. It happens out of nowhere. There's some days I wake up and I literally just can't breathe and I feel like an elephant sitting on my chest and I'm being choked to death. And that's how it is. And it's like that for a while, or sometimes it can last all day. Then there's some days I wake up and I feel fine. And then there's sometimes I'm going about my day, living my life, I'm with my son somewhere, or I'm by myself running errands, or I'm with a friend, or I'm, I'm at work, and then all of a sudden it literally is like a fucking semi-truck just smacks me in the face, and I literally can't breathe. I start shaking, you know, I start getting the sweats, hot and cold flashes, my chest starts to tighten, I feel like I can't swallow all the way or take a full deep breath. And I start to just, my mind races and my mind just spins and spins and spins. And I freak myself out. And it happens all the time. And, and for people that deal with anxiety, it's normal. 100% okay. And you know what? I'm actually going to end this here. Because I, I'm almost home and I have to pee really bad. And it's now dark outside. So there's no light in here because I'm in my car. And this video is now 35 minutes long. Um, so yes, this will be part one. I will do part two soon. Um, sorry, this was kind of scattered and all over the place. I do apologize. I just had to talk. And I want to share my story to everybody else and hope to God that it helps somebody. And, you know, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I will see you guys in my next video, which will probably be a makeup video. And then I'll go back to part two for this. Um, so I do want to film part two at my house. Okay, I hope you guys have a great night or day wherever you are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon.